Hi everyone, welcome to Four Keys for Implementing High Value Huddle Spaces webinar. My name is Maggie Bliss and I will be your moderator this morning. Um, today we will be joined by Robert Arnold, Principal Analyst at Frost & Sullivan, Bryce Page, Product Marketing Manager at Dolby Laboratories, and Zach Bozen, Senior Director of Product Marketing at Blue Jeans. Before I pass it off, um, we'd like to go over some housekeeping items. Today's webinar, we are using the Blue Jeans event product, so all attendees are currently in a one-way viewing experience. If you have any technical issues during the webinar, please post them in the moderator chat feature, which you can find in the right-hand navigation. If you have any questions regarding today's topic, please post them in the Q&A chat feature, and we will talk to them at the end of the presentation. Um, and this is being recorded, so we will send it out after the presentation. Thanks. I'll hand it off to Robert now. Hi, everybody. I am one of those people with a technical difficulty. My MIS department supposedly fixed something in my machine, and it didn't work. So I get to join with full concentration on the content today. Thank you for joining. Um, with me are two co-speakers, Bryce Page, uh, Product Marketing from Dolby Labs, and Zach Bosin, Senior Director of Product Marketing from Blue Jeans Network. Real quickly, I want to go over the agenda. We're going to um, not kill you with slides today, hopefully, and provide you with some good takeaways and information. Um, we're going to walk through some changes that are happening in the workforce and the workplace, and what you can do to um, not only head that off, but enable new benefits for your business. Um, the right uh, rich media cloud services or video conferencing with the appropriate deployment in your meeting spaces can drive a lot of value and help you move forward in your digital transformation. So let's jump in. On slide four, uh, I want to just give a quick overview to the modern workforce. And some people might be um, shaking their heads or rolling their eyes, but it's well past time to take the preferences of the modern and future workforce seriously. There are many third-party sources out there that show engaged employees are more satisfied, loyal, and productive. If you see this uh, top stat at the middle of the page on the upper side, um, Accenture found that companies with great employee experience outperform the S&P 500 by well over 100%. So we know it's increasingly important to enable high value employees to work when, how, and where they prefer. And you'll see some examples of that here underneath the uh, columns for Gen Z, Y, and X. And there's also a lot of overlap uh, in those preferences and capabilities. So if we jump to uh, the next uh, slide, please. Um, we know that our meetings are changing. However, many solutions that are still leveraged today are outmoded. They're just good enough. But good enough is not good enough in the increasingly competitive global business climate. Uh, particularly um, as you spend money on your technology and employees and your workplace. So we need to get it right. A majority of workers report that they're distracted at work, about 70%, and it's higher for millennials and Gen Z. So if we look at the open office boom or the, the concept of tearing down the walls uh, within your workplace, it hasn't really worked. It's caused a number of problems. People are multitasking during their phone calls. Almost 60% of people report doing that. But it shrinks dramatically when video is employed. Only 4% admit that they multitask because you're more engaged and you're more concentrated on the subject at hand and the content. These tools show great uh, promise as um, well, this is a stat from Blue Jeans Network that uh, I validated. Today's meetings um, average less than 36 minutes. 
And that dovetails very well, and what we're seeing is meetings are becoming more dynamic, more impromptu and ad hoc. So it's important to have technology that fires up right away and is user-friendly so people can take advantage of the features and capabilities to work more uh, effectively together. If we go to the next slide, please. What we're finding, though, and this is a um, data from a Frost and Sullivan survey uh, conducted this past year, 2019, of 1,000 IT decision makers um, across industries, company sizes, and across the globe. Very interestingly, um, not enough decision makers are considering their workforce demographics when they're investing, investing in technology like communications and collaboration. Our survey found that only 27% always consider their workforce's needs when they're buying uh, communications and collaboration solutions. And that's actually not much better than the 23% that never think of what their employee base wants or only sometimes consider this. If we can go to the next one, please. Here we're talking about what that uh, base of IT decision makers, what they report their office configurations to be. About 63% report that they have a mix of, of spaces of varying configurations with uh, meeting spaces and meeting rooms of varying sizes and therefore probably uh, varying uh, use cases and utilization. Um, there remains a big problem though in that um, as we need undistracted private meeting spaces Excuse me. As, as we see the, the need for um, undistracted private meeting spaces on slide eight, this is finally being recognized by decision makers. If you look at the bottom three rows, open offices, huddle rooms, and phone booths, a phone booth is a very small private um, area where one or two people can meet. Um, all three bottom rows, show um, where people or IT decision makers plan to spend their budgets going forward. There's gonna be continuation of open offices, but importantly, we're gonna see more uh, dedicated meeting spaces where people can meet and collaborate. And that's a great thing, right? But if we go to slide nine, we have a problem. And the problem is that these spaces are proliferating. However, very few are equipped with multimedia technology. So how is the, the workforce supposed to meet and collaborate with distributed colleagues, partners, customers, et cetera, if they only have audio capability? That is a big problem. So if we look at the next page, slide 10, there is an understanding that this needs to change. Our survey respondents uh, reported in a very heavy fashion that they plan to start investing uh, more readily in desktop communications and collaboration tools like web conferencing, video conferencing, chat, um, video playback, recording, et cetera, as well as uh, on-site mobile devices and peripherals uh, for their collaboration solutions. And importantly, if you look in the middle, again, we validate that um, in those growing number of meeting spaces, they're uh, looking to outfit them with the appropriate technology and bridge those silos or gaps that exist between different locations and different uh, work groups. So to be successful, you can't just build more meeting spaces and 
buy some off-the-shelf DYI uh, solutions or equipment to add that much-needed collaboration technology into your meeting room. You must have a plan. And on slide 11, we introduce this plan that Blue Jeans Network, Dolby Labs, and Frost and Sullivan have collaborated to uh, develop. We believe that this is a winning formula as you look to modernize your workplace, engage your workforce, and empower employees with the right technology. And I'll go through each of these four. The first one is a focus on ease of use. As a baseline, this should always be the focus end to end from the beginning of your purchase decision through the evolution of your investment over the life cycle. Ease of use discusses not only users or employees, but also administrators, and facilities. From a user perspective, it's critical to have an intuitive UI from which employees can access the full range of capabilities for their solution. Voice, video, data, chat, recording, um, playback, streaming, um, meeting controls, invitations, all of these things but also have the ability to just have a meeting. The, the empowered employee or the empowered meeting host can just launch a meeting and escalate capabilities as needed. Maybe beginning as a voice call, then sharing content, switching on video as someone would like to demonstrate something, maybe a widget that they're showing. So it's very important to have all these capabilities in one place so that the silos of technology don't get in the way of the meeting. From an administrator perspective, unified management and utilities are essential. Rather than having to train, track, and support dedicated purpose-built platforms, IT can gain so much more flexibility, agility, and some of their time back with a unified platform. It should have centralized management that allows administration from a web-based portal across the entire network so that your satellite offices, your home workers, your regional offices, your global sites can be administered without IT having to be on site. And importantly, as I mentioned earlier, integration across apps. So if the user can seamlessly transition from one media to another, administrators should be able to um, manage that platform, those applications, in, uh, seamlessly as well. Now, for facilities are often kind of left out of, into the wind um, when choosing a solution for meeting spaces, but they should be included because a lot of times they're going to have to uh, remediate the room, usually, if they need to outfit it with power, outfit it with uh, network capabilities. Um, and uh, standardization across the rooms is important from a facilities perspective for all the components that they have to support that might not be IT. So that's pillar number one. Pillar number two that's essential for success is use case flexibility. Those purpose-built tools that we used to have, and some of us are still dragging along, well, they actually can be great, but they're also purposely self-limiting. We need to think more holistically as we move forward. 
And therefore, you need to have a robust feature set of audio, video content, chat, et cetera, that accommodates different use cases. Whether it's one-to-many meetings, presentations, interactive discussions, several-to-many, small group interaction, one-to-one -one interactions, teams that might be distributed across town, across the country, or across the globe. People need to meet anywhere at any time with full capabilities. This allows, this robustness and this flexibility uh, allows to get the most utilization out of your investment rather than a room or a platform or a subscription sitting idle. Look for a solution with the range and depth of functionality that supports your use cases for town halls, board meetings, webinars, small team meetings, lectures, HR interviews. But it also needs to support the varying room sizes and configurations that you have without compromise. So we should be looking for a single solution that addresses all of these things. The third, uh, the third, third leg on the, uh, on the stool is designing for scale. Now this actually hooks into uh, the previous two pillars, flexibility and ease of use. Um, when, you scale, when you design with scale in mind, <clears throat> you should look for a solution that accounts for uh, elastic capacity adjustments that are rapid and allow you to accommodate seasonal fluctuations in your business, future growth, new use cases that may come on board. At the same time, designing for scale touches on what we talked about in um, ease of use. Being able to standardize cuts down on the, the manpower required to support a range of functionality. And that's important because we can reassign IT re resources to higher value tasks within the organization to innovate. And the last pillar for success is we need to make sure that we measure what we're doing. We hear a lot in the industry about optimizing business outcomes but we don't hear a lot about what that actually means. What should we be looking for? Well, we should be taking a look at our utilization, our usage of our conferencing technology and taking a look at how that's affecting different metrics, perhaps marketing or sales teams. What does the pipeline look like compared to those that aren't using video conferencing technology? How is it affecting product cycle times? Is it accelerating product type cycle times? One of our findings is that uh, there's a rising recognition for the greater benefits of video conferencing beyond carbon offsets and travel avoidance. So we should be looking at the metrics that matter and trying to understand how usage is correlated or driving those metrics. And once we figure out what is working well, because we want to scale, because we want to drive the benefits to more parts of the business, we can develop a set of best practices to map and repeat in more parts of the organization because we know it works. Now on the next slide, this um, touches on what I just mentioned is the broader benefits of collaboration technologies, such as video conferencing. 
IT decision makers and stakeholders are recognizing that it can have a much more broad and deep impact on their uh, business and their operations, their employees, and their customer satisfaction. So it's important to look at why you're looking for uh, new technology, identify your metrics early, but also um, understand that we can do more uh, with the technology than we thought we could five years ago. So in general, it's important to have a plan, to follow a plan, but to have your eye on the prize uh, once you begin implementation and to continue, continue to evolve that Im implementation um, as your organization changes. And with that, I wanted to uh, pass to Bryce and um, take a look at what Dolby Labs is seeing in the field and what the company is doing about it to address customer needs. Is Bryce muted? Hey, everybody. This is Bryce from Dolby Labs. Hey, Bryce. Uh, so I, I just wanted to say thank you for uh, inviting me onto the call and uh, giving me a chance to chat with you. Um, I, I wanted to kind of set a little bit of background on Dolby kind of entering this field. And I think we've touched on a lot of the themes and the things that we've seen. Um, but I wanted to just kind of share a little bit about our specific lens um, when we think about making products um, for uh, meeting rooms in the modern workforce. So, you know, for us as Dolby as a company, we're an experience driven company and, and it's really kind of the core of what we're after and what we're, we're trying to deliver to our customers. Um, and, and the key of that is that, you know, when we say an experience, we mean an experience that sounds and feels like an in-person conversation. Um, that's really our bar of success. And, and, and part of an in-person conversation is having an audio experience that's very radically different than what most of us are kind of used to in a standard video conference. So we really focused a lot of our efforts in developing a very different approach to how we built a, a solution for that from a hardware perspective. And we also worked very hard on that with BlueJeans on how we'd actually be able to deliver that to our customers. So experience is one component of it. We want to deliver that to our customers. Um, but the next part of that is that, you know, you can deliver a great experience, but if it's not easy to use, it, it, it's not effective, it's not helpful. And I think we were touching on some of those themes that, you know, you, you've got to be able to get in and get to work with the product. So we wanted to help build out a solution that um, was easy for anybody to walk into a room and immediately start using. And so, you know, when we finished the hardware components, we really worked with BlueJeans and had them build the actual in, in experience. So this is a product we see as co-developed with BlueJeans. So if you know how to use BlueJeans at all, you can walk into any one of these rooms and have a meeting and it'll sound like an in-person experience. But simplicity goes this other direction as well, which is that that's great. I'm glad my users are happy. I'm glad it sounds better, but it's got to be easy for IT to manage. And so when we looked at that component of it, we knew that we had to do some really specific things to make this entire product suite that we developed very easy to manage at scale. And then the last component of that is that you have to do all of those things and deliver real value. And, and we mean that in a few different ways, but we wanted to put a lot of really nice advanced features into this system. So you're really getting a lot for the product. Um, and we also wanted to deliver it at a great price. So we're trying to help build that value, not just from a, yep, it's Dolby, it sounds good, um, but also from a, this is designed to help you and grow with you, and it's a built on a platform that we can continually enhance with great new features, which I'm excited to share a little bit more about in just a minute. Um, just at its core, like when we talk about Dolby Voice Room, what is this product, what are, what are these systems, um, we really have a, a suite of products kind of centered around two cameras depending on the room size that you're looking at. Um, so what we have is essentially our computer system is what we call just a hub. So this is a hardened internet appliance. It's uh, not a Windows PC. It's not a consumer OS. This is really our own design um, that BlueJeans have built an app uh, inside of. So we've got the security and the concerns for IT addressed right off the bat because they have something that they'll be able to manage at scale, whether it's through command center or the tools that Dolby supplies. 
And really, the, the great part about the hub is that this is where we actually centralize all of the video intelligence. And we'll talk about those features in just a minute, but you know, this is where the, the smarts for video processing happen. Uh, conversely, the, the phone in this situation is actually where we do all of our advanced audio processing. So when we're talking about some of the advanced features like its stereo spatial capture, that's all happening in the phone. So we've really kind of centralized all of the brains in these two components. The last part of it is what camera is right for your space. So just to kind of break that out, when we talk about Dolby Voice Room, we're talking about this system that's really designed for small and medium rooms. So, you know, we usually use a seat count. I think that's the easiest thing. So Dolby Voice Room is designed for up to about 10 seats. You can probably put more people in there. It'll be just fine. Um, but what we had a lot of feedback when we launched that product was, hey, I really like this, um, but I want to have that same experience in my boardrooms. Um, and so we got really great customer feedback that led us to the path of, well, let's adopt a really great camera that's going to work in that space. So Dolby Voice Room Pro is essentially our larger uh, design system and camera for those spaces. So you have um, more flexibility when it comes to the variability in those large rooms, right? So we've got a lot of that built in. When I'm talking about that experience and, and, and really kind of what's powered on this and, and why we selected one camera versus another, the, the core of this is that Camera Pro is a PTZ camera. So it can do an optical zoom, whereas our standard camera here has a digital zoom. So in those smaller spaces, that 4K over scan that it does is perfect for those scenarios and can offer a really great experience when it's zooming into the participants. And Camera Pro is really great because it can adapt to those much larger spaces um, without having to worry about a digital loss at a certain amount of feet. Um, the core of this is that you have the same meeting experience no matter which one of these camera systems that you're choosing. So when we talk about this and what our design for uh, what an in-person conversation is, um, we mean that in a couple ways. And the first is just from a video perspective. We, we wanted to have a system that could actually perfectly frame everybody that's in a conversation. And when I say that, I don't mean who's talking. I mean who, who all is in the room. So we, we actually built a really advanced algorithm that runs on the hub that will actually look for not just faces and not just like a body in space, but actually has a pretty complex set of rules on how it determines that that's a person and will capture that view. The nice part is that works whether it's in a small meeting room or in a large meeting space. And one of the other nice features we built into this is uh, a feature we just call whiteboard framing, which is the fact that, you know, by and large, when we're sharing and collaborating, our first instinct is to go to a board. But we didn't want our customers to have to buy something else in order to have that really great experience. So we actually built that in as a feature. So I'm going to actually share my video and just kind of talk through those two features really quickly. So right now, you can actually see intelligent scene framing working. The camera system automatically detected that I'm right here, and it just smoothly focused in on me. If somebody else is to walk in the room, you'll actually see the camera system back out like it is, and they'll frame that next person in this as well. So the intention of this feature is that this is something that should just disappear in the meeting. You shouldn't have to worry, oh, is the camera system actually going to pick me up? And you shouldn't be distracted by it either. You shouldn't see that the view is snapping to somebody else as we're talking. We want to see the whole conversation um, because that's what our experience is when we meet in person. We aren't you know, snapping our heads to whoever's talking most of the time. Uh, we want the ability to choose. And when it comes to whiteboard framing, I don't know if you actually can see it, but I actually have a whiteboard in my office here. And you know, if we're looking at a standard tool, it'd be really kind of a pain for me to grab my camera uh, remote and kind of point it towards the whiteboard and then it's still at an angle. So what we actually built into this is a feature where if you want to share um, some content from the board, all I have to do is just tap share whiteboard and this is perfectly framed. So if I want to add something else, a uh, really important note like a smiley face, you guys can at least see that um, without me having to get my camera, uh, adjust it, without me having to have another accessory in the meeting room, this is perfectly taken care of. And this is just finished in a setup of the first time you set up the room. So you can quickly set this up right from the UI of the phone. So, you know, again, trying to deliver a lot of really nice features that most people are going to want in their meetings uh, without having you get something else. And kind of the last component of it is all around the Dolby Audio pieces, which are really powered not just exclusively in the hardware, but also from the technology that BlueJeans has actually built out from their cloud and into each one of their applications. So we have voice placement, which is really more like a 3D audio experience. We have an incredible pickup range from the phone, which is why it can work in a small meeting space up to a boardroom. And then we have a last feature, which is going to take every voice 
in the meeting room and actually level them. So even if I'm near the phone or I'm further away, you're going to have a really a level experience rather than kind of the please step away from the phone. You're way too loud. Um, and you just have a nice balanced meeting experience like we have. If I was in person, I can hear everybody. There's not something getting in my way of that. So we were just trying to build our tools to help augment that experience. Um, the thing that I'm really excited to talk to you about here, too, is that we've also heard a lot of feedback from our customers is that this experience built into BlueJeans is excellent. What I want to do, too, is also have external meetings. And that's actually a feature that we're rolling out um, right now. So when we're talking about this system having that flexibility, we also mean that it can support how you'd like to use it. So Dolby Voice Room can connect to WebEx, Teams through the BlueJeans gateway, and also Zoom calls all built in from the UI. So you can schedule those meetings, or you could just uh, tap from the uh, UI if you'd like to join one of those other meetings. So we try to build that in as well as, you know, people want that flexibility, not just for their own internal calls, but the ability to join other calls without any friction in the way. And the nice part about the platform, the way we've built it in collaboration with BlueJeans is that this is something that we can continue to add to this and make it even more powerful as time goes on. Zach, I saw you pop on. Uh, did you have a comment? I think uh, I'm going to hand it over to Zach uh, because it was actually the time. So thanks, everybody. My apologies. Uh, and uh, I'll let you take it away. Explosion that we're seeing. 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 Let's see. Is that working? Okay, all systems go. So once again, thank you, Rob, and thank you, Bryce, for doing the product deep dive. And Bryce, if you wouldn't mind just building out this slide, there's, um, I think, uh, maybe four, four buttons there to click out. And what I wanted to uh, cover today very briefly with everyone is kind of a new packaging model that we've introduced uh, in support of Blue Jeans Rooms featuring Dolby Voice Room uh, and the Dolby Voice Room Pro. And that's something called Blue Jeans Rooms as a Service. And this is really an all-inclusive package that enables customers to really scale out their room buildouts uh, on demand. So it includes not only the hardware, so the Dolby Conference Phone, the Dolby Voice Hub, the Dolby Voice Camera, or the Dolby Voice Camera Pro, but it also includes the BlueJeans Room service, uh, which has command center so you can easily manage uh, your room estate uh, and manage any kind of ongoing uh, troubleshooting or monitoring or management that you need to have. Uh, and this is all brought together for a low fee uh, that can be purchased in one year, two year, or three year increments. Uh, and so there's a lot of benefits really of this solution um, for both IT personas and for the finance team. So Bryce, if you could go to the next slide, we'll dive into some of those benefits. From an IT standpoint, um, this was a survey that was conducted, uh, and maybe you've heard of device as a service because it's not only relevant when you're outfitting uh, conference room systems, but also whether it's PCs or other enterprise technology. Uh, and some of the benefits that IT leaders have seen as a part of this type of packaging is really simplifying device management. I think that one of the challenges that modern IT organizations have is the proliferation of devices. Uh, and so there's really an approach here that allows you to focus on one type of device, provide that at scale, uh, and really try to simplify all the different uh, monitoring and management and troubleshooting that you have to do across the board. So really try to hone in on one specific solution, and Rooms as a Service allows you to do that. Uh, a second key benefit is just reducing the IT workload. So with the Rooms as a Service uh, approach, we actually provide a premier warranty, uh, forward replacement, and all of the support that you need to have a successful experience. So if you can reduce that workload, you can free up uh, IT bandwidth and focus that on uh, alternative efforts and alternative projects. Uh, so really critical benefit of the Rooms as a Service approach. And then there's also a predictable cost model. So when you think about what those rooms are going to cost, you know that with the Dolby Voice Room, it comes with an incredible audio experience, an incredible video experience. The management is built in through Command Center. The hub automatically updates. And you know what you're paying every month for the period that you've subscribed to. So that's different than maybe some other room systems where you're buying uh, the hardware. You have an upfront cost, but then you need to outfit the room with different types of microphones or different lighting or different uh, audio muting capabilities. Um, so really, this solution is all-inclusive, uh, and that allows uh, IT teams as well as finance teams to match out their resources uh, across a given time period. 
Now, if we can go one more slide forward, you can see some of the benefits from a finance perspective. And it's really the finance leaders who are super excited about this model. Uh, one of the major drivers here is that because it's a subscription, uh, it can be actually procured using op uh, OPEX instead of CAPEX. Uh, CAPEX investments, as I'm sure all of you know, tend to require a little bit longer of an approval process. Uh, and you can't really buy that hardware, get it implemented, and get up, up and running as fast as you want. Uh, so a critical difference here is being able to use that OPEX budget to invest in these room systems and get them going as fast as you possibly can. Because your operating uh, expense allows you to kind of buy rooms on demand and at scale, you don't have to buy a ton of rooms at first. We see a lot of our customers purchasing or a subscription for one or two rooms and then building onto that as they're outfitting new spaces. And so this model really enables you to do that instead of spending uh, a large outflow right at the beginning for a ton of room systems. Uh, it, once again, it provides that predictability that we already talked about and a simpler and cleaner OPEX-based accounting treatment uh, when thinking about where the budget's coming from. So a lot of benefits to take to the finance team. Um, and if we go to the next page, you can see a TCO model that we've built out that really kind of highlights what that starts to look like. Um, and we've actually built out a calculator that you can use uh, to, to plug in and work with your finance teams uh, to map out what the best strategy is going forward. Obviously, um, we've had a lot of customers who are very excited about this subscription model, but you can also still uh, purchase the Dolby Voice Room, uh, the Dolby Voice Room Pro using a, a traditional purchasing process. But when you start to map out all the different elements that are included in rooms as a service, you can start to see why there's a lower overall total cost of service. Things like the warranty are included and the hardware refresh after 48 months, uh, which are available, forward replacement uh, in case there's any trouble that comes through, as well as logistics and shipping and e-waste and disposal. So this is for a three-year license. Uh, the monthly price for the Dolby Voice Room here is $149. So over three years, it comes to about $5,000, a little bit over than that. If you're doing a traditional purchasing process, um, the buy price from an MSRP standpoint around eight grand. Maybe there's a discount from the street around seven grand. But at the end of the day, you can see that the rooms as a service model uh, makes financial sense. And there's a lot of benefits in terms of having uh, Blue Jeans be kind of the single vendor that provides this service from a hardware uh, and a software perspective and a support perspective. So we've had a lot of customers who have um, jumped right in and adopted this model, and we're seeing a lot of traction. So I would love to talk to all of you uh, about this model going forward. And that is that is really what we wanted to share today. Uh, let me roll over to the, the QA and see if we've had any uh, questions come in. Cool. Um, Bryce, here's a good one uh, that you may be able to speak to. Uh, can you elaborate? Oh, it looks like maybe well, this will be good for everyone. So how do you actually set up the whiteboard mode? And what are kind of the steps involved uh, in, in building that out for a room? Yeah, so let, let's talk a little bit about um, just kind of a baseline. So you have a whiteboard in a room probably, or maybe you're deciding to put one in. Um, the, the whole component of uh, using this feature with our system is that if the whiteboard is visible into the room, um, it could actually be set up in, in order for it to view. So if you notice that my, my whiteboard here is actually at a pretty extreme angle, um, I'll let you see the whole room here. Um, so, you know, I'm not at a perfect angle for this to be viewed. So there's actually a really ingenious uh, setup from BlueJeans that they actually built out in the UI where you can just drag a couple corners, highlight the area on the board that you want to share, set that. That's part of uh, your initial setup. And once that's complete, it's set. You can easily change it as well or prevent people from doing that if you're an IT admin. So really tried to build that out to be pretty quick and easy to set up without a lot of rules and restrictions on how you can do it and where and when. Great question. Awesome. Yeah, actually playing with the whiteboard setup uh, mode is actually kind of fun because you're mapping it out and stretching it out, uh, and then it just works. Um, so it's pretty clever. There's another question we have around multi-service. Uh, the question is, can BlueJeans work with Zoom, or do you run either Zoom or BlueJeans? Uh, so this is a question about multi-service. And so uh, ultimately, you are using the Dolby Voice Room to connect either to a BlueJeans meeting or a Zoom meeting. Um, so the device connects to one of those meetings. Uh, if it's a BlueJeans room, then it will connect to the BlueJeans service. If you're trying to connect to a Zoom meeting, uh, effectively, you can you can uh, use OneTouch Join uh, and use that to connect to a Zoom meeting. But you will need a Zoom room license uh, to the other room that you're connecting to. So here's another question. Uh, Bryce, this might be a good one for you. How easy is it to move this system from room to room? 
Uh, we actually have uh, quite a few customers that are, are really happy about it because when they plug it in, uh, it just takes a few seconds to boot up uh, and they can use it in other rooms. So that actually has been pretty popular. It's pretty easy to move it from one room to the next, assuming that nothing about the network is really changing drastically from one space to another. So assuming all things equal in an enterprise, that it's really from one spot to another, um, that you're not dealing with a different firewall, it should be pretty simple for you to do that and uh, only take a few minutes for it to be up and running again. Great question. Cool. And here's here's another one. Um, can this device be used as a phone, as a regular phone, Bryce? Maybe you could talk about some of the setup required for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's a really uh, a great great question. I'm glad you highlighted it, and uh, I, I'm sorry I didn't speak to it earlier. But yeah, the phone is also a, a SIPS standard space phone. So if you have an on-prem uh, you know, call system like Cisco, Avaya, um, and a bunch of the others. We've already actually certified this phone to work with each one of those as a third-party device. Um, and if you have any one of the number of cloud uh, um, SIP, uh, services, this also will work with those. So um, we have set up guides actually for a good broad majority of most calling platforms. But yeah, we have we have this phone set up so it can work in dual modes. So you only interact with one device in the room. It's just the phone on the table with the Blue Jeans UI. Um, but it does have a really helpful button where if you have the phone configured, you can just tap phone, dial your phone number, and uh, you know make a phone call out very easily. So yeah, that was all the intent in there too, is to have the flexibility in what kinds of meetings you want to join as well. Great question. Cool. And let's see, there's one other question here. Um, so the Dolby Voice Room Pro is for those larger rooms. Uh, are there satellite mics available, or does the Dolby conference phone work in all like large, big rooms? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. So we, we do actually have a satellite microphone kit. It is available for you to implement, and they're basically just plugged right into the bottom of the phone. Um, really no setup to those. Um, and those will give you basically a six-foot rope of cable um, and then a, a mute button. So if you have a really long table, we've had some customers want it just purely to be able to mute from the, the far end of the table. Um, so that might be really nice. As far as the range, it does extend the range. So our official spec when you're using satellite mics is up to 30 feet. So we, we consider that a pretty sizable um, meeting space and boardroom. Um, so, you know, you will get some benefit from that, but know that the phone's range is about 20 feet. So if you're really kind of on the fence whether or not you can get them or if, if they make sense, we'd recommend at least starting with the phone and kind of seeing that coverage. You're really only going to see um, a drop off at the most extreme angles where essentially somebody's about as far away from the phone um, as possible. But we welcome customers to, to implement those microphones if they think they've got a space that's worth it for them. So, yeah. Cool. Okay, here is another one. Um, do the cameras flip the image so they can be mounted upside down under the display? Yeah, it's, it's a really good question, and it uh, comes up a lot in depending on what the room size is. So, um, yes, both of them will support uh, inverting the image and essentially flipping it upside down if you need to mount the cameras upside down. Um, just a double click on mounting option. So, we actually built the hub in our initial camera to be able to interlock and you can sit it on top of a TV without you having to deal with any mounting. Um, if you don't want to do that, the actual camera itself, the standard camera, has a tripod mount so it would easily fit into any standard mounting you'd want to install. Um, and then the Dolby Voice Room Pro, because it's a, a larger and mechanical device, um, we actually include mounting brackets for it, as well as it's supporting some standard industry mounts. So if you've got some existing mounts, should hook up to this just fine. But we also include some in the box if you're having to kind of install it fresh. So you should have most of those things covered. We're trying to make it pretty easy. It's in the uh, administrative settings um, for Dolby Voice Room uh, to adjust that for either camera to flip it uh, upside down. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. It looks like there's a couple questions that we can tackle offline um, that are more relevant to kind of just general blue jeans meetings, but um, we'll give it another minute or two here and see if anyone has any other questions um, about the Dolby Voice Room, the Dolby Voice Room Pro, Blue Jeans Rooms as a service, uh, or anything for Rob in terms of the, the content that he covered up front. Cool. Well, that's right around at 45 minutes. So we 
Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for spending your time with us. Uh, we hope you found this useful, and we'll be following up with some more information. Thanks so much. Have a great day.